Okay, buddy. Hop inside. Big jump. Good boy. Nice and easy, huh? And this is a feature I think you're really going to appreciate uh, right down here over on the door. So massaging seats, we've got the memory positions here, one, two, and three. This button here calls up a menu on our screen over there, allows us to fine tune in very small increments each individual part of the seat here if we want. You can hear the air pump going when I press this. Hear that? It's just slightly increasing or decreasing the amount of air in each of these segments. And these are the perfect position seats to give us the most comfortable seating position. But what you really wanna do is get up here into the massage menu, and then you wanna pick the circular cushion massage. It is fantastic. Park reverse neutral drive, and you just hold the brake pedal and then press the gear that you want. Those are symphonic chimes, by the way. So we have this dial here that we rotate left and right, and when we do that, we watch up here on the display screen for the drive mode that we're selecting. So as I'm rotating this, I'll go all the way to one side here outline these modes for you. So pure EV, that makes it easy to drive the Corsair using only electric power and not using any gas. We switch that over to preserve EV, that allows us to have a full 50 kilometer charge, uh, which we don't right now, that's referenced here. We have 14. But if we had a 50 kilometer charge, or if we wanted to save that 14 kilometers of charge for later, then we would put it in preserve EV mode which tells the car that you wanna use that stored range for later on. Over here, we've got the Excite mode. This is like sport mode. It uses the electric motors to boost the engine, giving you full power, really awesome throttle response, uh, really smooth glide up to speed. Quite a fan of that Excite drive mode. Next up, Conserve. That makes it easy for us to drive in the most energy efficient manner possible in that mode. And over here, we've got Normal. This is kind of an automatic one size fits all setting. One more flick over here and we're into slippery mode. We can use that on cold and icy days. Uh, this is for deep conditions, maybe a little bit of light off-roading, a muddy trail and so on. And so with that, just a few millimeters of fingertip movement is all that you need to control just about everything to do with the Corsair's driveline, but also when and how it uses that stored electric charge. So this is the travel charger that is included with the car and it has a standard household plug there. And I take the other end here, you can see the connector. Open this up. These little blue lighting segments here correspond to the charge state of the battery, which means that right now uh, we're fairly low, we're recharging that next segment. If you want details, you can just look inside. And we can see that on level one, uh, we started there at 26%. We'll be at 100% at 3.57 a.m., which is something like uh, nine hours from now. What's much faster than that is to unplug from the travel charger. And if you've got one, uh, to use a level two charger like this. So this stays on the house. Unplug it there. Grab ourselves some cable. This is pushing a lot more power into the battery. Same thing, plug it in. And now you can see from that same 26%, uh, 
uh, on level one, it was going to have us fully charged at uh, just before four in the morning. On level two, it'll be ready just by 11. That's a little over two hours from right now. All right, so here's me at five foot 10 and 200 pounds, my comfortable seated driving position. You probably just saw there, nice easy shift sideways into my seat. No climbing up, no plopping down. Easy to board and exit. Nothing's too crowded, nothing is too cramped. Uh, generous knee room, headroom here with the sunroof, still the width of my hand above my head. Pretty standard for an SUV of this size. So let's hop in the back and see how someone of my size would fit directly behind themselves. Again, very easy to hop in here, just sort of a lateral butt slide in your into your seat. So first thing, one of my favorite bits of design in here is this console area, which you can see is sort of angled down towards me like this. It keeps a lot of the button clutter uh, for the stereo climate control system and seats and the like down and out of your way, right? So when I'm looking out of the vehicle here, I've got this kind of neat and tidy upper dash that doesn't really have any buttons on it. And to find those buttons and that extra clutter, I've got to come all the way down here. And so I really like that setup because while I'm driving, it keeps my outward sight lines nice and clutter free and free of distraction. And all the complicated buttons and switches are sort of down there out of the way where I don't have to look at them. And they're pretty logical to use. Now the downside to that, as nice as that all looks, you're going to need uh, one of these on board, a Swiffer, if you want to keep this stuff looking clean, because let's get right up close there, I just gave it a little Swiffer to get all the dust off. But if you look down here where I didn't, you can see this stuff is just a magnet uh, for dust and dog hair and the like. It looks great, but it's pretty tricky to keep clean. Uh, contextual buttons here on the steering wheel. So we've got this uh, little D-pad on this side, another one similar over there. And you can see the icons on these are backlit. So for instance, we tap down here to control vehicle settings and whatnot. That comes up on the screen there. We'll get some focus here. But now I've just got the OK in the back arrow to let me manipulate those particular screens. And once I'm out of there, by pressing the back button, you can see my control surface changes and now I can call up more functions. On this side, we've always got uh, volume and track control for the stereo. There's the cruise control button there. We've got this other sort of pad down here that lights up when we turn the cruise control on. There's our cruise controls. And when we turn the cruise control off, away they go. So handy little touch that helps keep your driving environment that little bit more tidy looking and simple. Head up display up here, little tricky to get the camera to focus on that, but I think you can see that just displaying some vital running data there, sort of virtually hovering over the edge of the hood, down low in my line of sight. Good graphics, good color, not too big and flashy. Uh, really appreciate that touch for driving at night. So three buttons down here for common functions that we're gonna use fairly frequently. The first one, that's our parking system, parking assist. Come down here and press this one. And that's driver assistance, auto hold and traction control in this case. Come down again for this button, no surprise there. Uh, that's our parking camera system. We've got the camera in here nice and close. We've got clean lenses, nice crisp graphics, and that 360 degree bird's eye view. What that's showing us is 532 kilometers worth of gasoline in the gas tank and 52 kilometers worth of electricity in the battery. Well, thank you for watching. My name is Justin Pritchard, and until next time, take care and drive safe.